Welcome to kvci.blogspot.com in Valdosta, Georgia. Title Town, USA. You can visit my blog. In fact, I encourage you to go to kvci.blogspot.com and on YouTube, Boston GVR. I woke up this morning and I felt a great need to talk to my fellow Americans. I looked on the wall and I picked up a pacifier. And I put the pacifier on the necklace of the continent of Africa. And I began to think about all the videos and letters that I have written to even Walmart concerning my wrong for termination. I think about the 30 deaths that we've had in the Valdosta and Lyons County Jail. No elected officials seem concerned about it. The inhumane conditions and the free people that have been let out to go home or to the hospital, some of them have died. I was thinking this morning about the Valdosta City School Board of Education system that has been under court order since 1971 because there was a great disparity and discriminatory practice of not hiring black African-American teachers. I thought about Attorney Roy Copeland. He's a good lawyer for having the courage to take on several court cases against the systems and agencies that be here in our local area, and I commend that beautiful attorney. I thought about the school system wherein there are only 32 seats available. In a city that is a metro city, Yet a little country town like Quitman, they have 32 seats for citizens to sit. I've been saying it for years that there seems to be a pattern in practice of ignoring the voters in Valdosta, Lowndes County, and perhaps South Georgia in general. I thought about Mayor John Freddy, who will not be running for office again, along with Councilman Wright, Councilman Yokes, Councilman White, Councilman Payton, Councilman Norton, Councilman Carroll, and Councilman Vickers during their tenure decided to move citizens to be heard from the front of the agenda to the back of the agenda as the, la the last item before they adjourned the meeting. Even council comments, city manager's report, all comes before the voters address the council. I always try to do my homework. So I went across the nation. This is what I'm working on now. I went to Omaha, Nebraska first. And online I'm pulling all council meetings, agendas. So far I haven't found any city yet with citizen to be heard as the last item on the agenda. But I'm not going to talk about that publicly yet. I'm going to do my homework first. But I told Mayor John Freddy and the council members that I was 100% sure that one day God would send a mayor by or council members that would move 
citizens to be heard from the end of the agenda to the front of the agenda. You know, it's amazing, and I got to say this again, that Councilman Yokes made the statement that the citizens to be heard leave the meeting, and therefore they don't get to listen to all of the meetings, and he said that was disrespectful, as well as disrespecting them, and that if the council members and the mayor and those listen to us, then we should remain at the meeting and listen to them as well as the other items on the agenda. If I was below average intelligence, I would accept his answer or his observation of the problem. But I've been going to city council for a long time. I have seen the mayor give out awards for person of the week, a person of the quarter, whatever it may be. I've seen dignitaries come from overseas locations and people come just to see the presentation and following the awards and presentation ceremony, they leave the meetings and sometimes it's three-fourths of the meeting, only leave 10 people in the, in the audience. Yet, Councilman Yokes said absolutely nothing. I'm not picking on my beautiful brother. I respect the man. But I got to tell you the truth because only truth going to set you free. And so the question is, will sooner or later, if they are going to follow the precedent that they have set based on the information presented, Will they also move awards and decorations to the end of the meeting? I was sitting this morning and in the privacy of my own home, this just going through my mind. What is more sickening to me is how we, many of us, go to church and espouse to being the best Christian best Muslims, best members of Judaism, and other high and mighty denominations. But we cannot get involved in the daily day practices and affairs that goes on in a city and county that governs every aspect of our lives. It behooves me to hear a person say they got the Holy Ghost that they are saved and sanctified and on their way to heaven but cannot stand up against the injustices in our world. It seems as if though they can only move if it's dealing with a religious matter. It seems as if though they are incapable of understanding that Moses was a politician in regards of the job that he did up going against the Pharaoh of that day, which was Pharaoh. And throughout the Bible, we'll see God put kings in office. <clears throat> King David, was that not dealing in politics, carrying on the affairs of a city or a nation? And so many of us are like little babies, sucking on a pacifier. A pacifier that somebody has given us to control us, to make us modern day slaves without us ever knowing it. You see, our forefathers and mothers were not slaves. No, 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 no. They were not slaves. They were prisoners. They were prisoners. For they were confined on the plantation, confined to a house that the slave master set up, confined to prisoners' laws and rules, but today if we cannot stand up for what is right and what is truth because of fear, then we are slaves. Oh, you may not have the chains on your wrists and ankles, but you're still a slave. And you need a pacifier. 
our children today <clears throat> seem to be the most heartless children this earth has ever produced. Our children seem to be out of control. Our young children seem to not have anything to live for and everything to die for. They don't think twice about snatching a 90-year-old lady's purse. They don't think twice about driving without life or health insurance or auto insurance. They don't care anything about obeying the law for the most part. It's like a generation gone mad. Our young black boys are not only enemies to white people through perception, but even black folk don't trust the young black men on the street because of the way they dress, the way they carry themselves, the way they drop their pants down and the way they use profanity in the midst of little children in ways that my father and grandfather and great-grandfather would never do because they respected the youth of tomorrow knowing that they had to set an example for generations to come. But today, even the adults are living in fear and all they want is a pacifier. Give me a church denomination that I can look like and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give me a pacifier so I can act like a real Muslim while I practice my hate. Give me a pacifier in Judaism so I can say I'm following the teachings of Mora, Mo, uh, Moses and the Torah. But when it comes down to being just and wanting for your neighbor that which you want and have for yourself and your own children, we all end up lacking. We just want to pacify it. We want to look like a Christian on Sunday. We want to dress like a Christian. We want to go to church on Sunday. We got to be there when the doors open. We got to find something to criticize in terms of what is working against God and not as in the it's not in the volume of sacred law. We need a pacifier to make us feel good. Dr. King said it best. A baby first cry is a bid for attention. So today we'll go out, we put rolling rims on our cars. Buy us a BMW, Mercedes, the most expensive shoes, and alligator belt. And believe that we have reached success. Buy a big home that we can't afford. Big car in the driveway, but no money in the bank. We do that as a pacifier. The pacifier is that we want to look big. As my beautiful brother John Robinson say, you want to get out in the streets and pretend that we were shot from a big gun and know we came through the barrel of a BB gun. So I got up this morning and I thought about just talking along these lines. I want you to know in, in conclusion, we must think today Think outside the box of incarceration and indoctrination. The equipment tin, oh Lord, I can't forget the equipment tin. The equipment tin, those nine ladies and one gentleman, is perhaps the best black African Americans in South Georgia to reach the local, state, and soon the national level than we've had in a long time. And we can only imagine why the South Georgia television, newspapers and radio stations are not covering what they need to cover about the equipment team. I'm not going to dwell on that too much because I got that in other clips. I don't want to be redundant. I don't want to keep repeating the same thing. 
But I, in conclusion, I want to say to you, these videos, this word on the street, as I call it, is put in your mind and in your ears because I want you to understand the price to free you. Not outwardly, but in your mind. In your mind. So Brother Ryan don't want to give you pacify. I don't want you pacify. I want you satisfied. I want you on an equal level playing field. What has happened to the black African Americans is that we are caught in a monopoly game of no win. We come into the world, we make babies, we consume the goods from everybody else, but we provide absolutely nothing for ourselves in the, in the, in the areas of providing economics. We don't turn the money over in our community, but one time, when other nationalities turn over in their community up to 12 times, why is it that too many of us hate our blackness so much? Oh, you say you, you don't, but you do. Why don't you go and patronize stores where blacks are employed? Why don't you go to the restaurant, at least where they will hire black waitresses? And whether you know it or not, when you look around in this area, you won't see but very few black waitresses. It is as if though all we could do is cook and hide in the back room. Check it out. Don't take my word for it. Go to where you eat breakfast at on the south side and look around and see how many black waitresses are there. I've already asked the company. I've asked the restaurant owner. I've gone into the city and that, and I looked around on every floor and in every room looking to see who's employed. We are just not there. In any proportion to the percentage of black African Americans in this community. Well, some of you all say we're not qualified. We didn't apply for the job. Well, there are people in our community, if you are in the slick and among the cliques, you don't have to compete. Or, you, you know, I mean, they may put something in the paper to fill a little square, but they already know, many of them, who's going to be hired. But it's up to us to move away from the pacifiers. We need to demand some things. We, meet, we need to understand the golden rule and tell those in power, black or white, that we also have black people in power that are in positions, but they are too afraid to stand up on the side of truth and justice, and so they are more dangerous and more destructive to black folk than a white European. Oh yeah, that's true in many cases. In fact, many blacks are not really black, they have a white mind. Now, you say, Brother Ryan, why do you say that? First of all, my daddy, George Boston, is from Thomasville. My granddaddy from Brooks County. His granddaddy, but his, da his, his daddy, daddy, was a white man, a European. So Europeans is in my blood just a few years back the other way. So I have a black mind fighting a white mind in my head. So we hate the blackness of our skin and kin, and too often we don't even realize it. But I'm here to say to you, no more pacifiers. There are whites that have produced black children right here in Valdosta and Lyons County. You are the product of white lineage, but you won't say nothing about it. You just smooth it over because you need to be pacified. But I'm not ashamed of the truth. I stand on the truth. I believe in the truth and I want to die far and in behalf of truth. So I'm going to leave you now. The gist of this tape to you is this. 
Don't let anybody pacify you. No more pacification. We need justification and satisfaction today. Other words, we need part of the money to come into the city through contract. We need equal employment at the school system. We need some blacks in the front office of the Valdosta city school system. We need some of the asphalt paving business dollars. We need equal employment in the local, state, and federal governments. When we walk into the courthouse, we won't, don't want to see an all-white employment payroll. When we go to the city annex, we want to see black administrators getting monies from the city so they can take care of their sons and daughters so they won't have to go out on the street and rob, cheat, and steal to pay their probation officer. This is what we need. We need some black grocery stores. We need some black ownership of car dealerships. We need some black churches who will preach the truth and start instead of punking out under pressure. We don't need any Uncle Tom to go to white folks and sit on these different committees that work against us behind closed doors because they're scared as hell. We don't need that anymore. Those days are long gone. We need real black men and women that are proud that God gave them the blackness of their skin and kin and that they are connected with the continent of Africa and Ethiopia and that they, are, that they realize that they are the ancient Hebrew Israelites and the very chosen and essence of the God of creation. You were not cursed by Ham because, I mean, through Ham, because of Ham, and you were not cursed by God no more than any other human being. I'm telling you, don't let anybody put any limitations on what you should read. I'm saying that you read the Vulgate, read the lost books of the Bible, the six, seven, eight, nine, and ten books of Moses, they all out there. You find the book of Jasher, the book of Ecclesiasticus, the book of the wars of God, the book of the knowledge of God, and in the book, the Genesis of Christianity by Hotem. You definitely need to read that one. And find out how religion and Constantine and King, and King James brought into the Christian faith, as we call it, and find out the history of the Bible. Don't let people hoodwink you and bamboozle your head until you become so heavy as lead, until you cannot be resurrected from a dead level to a living perpendicular. It's time for us to get up now. I'm tired of people being tricked and used as a tool in the modern day Babylon. I'm going to leave you now. I got up this morning and something heavy on my mind. And I thought I would come to leave something on your mind. Yeah. This is take three. Word on the street. We call it word on the street because the news media won't tell you what's going in in, going on in your community. They won't tell you about Troop Street over there, although I, although I present, presented it before the mayor and council. They won't tell you about the Hudson Market area that I identified, although I presented it to city council, along with many other things. And that is why I started kvci.blogspot.com on YouTube, Boston GBR. I realized the power of the truth. And I realize the greatness of Jesus, wherein he said, and ye shall know the truth, and that the truth shall set and make you free. And I appeal unto all of you who get your hands on a copy of the word on the street, begin to ask your neighbor, what is the word on the street? Educate yourself. And remember, education can save us, but ignorance will destroy us. Luke 4.18, I do this because Luke 4.18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, the recovering of sight unto the blind, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And all the people of God and atheists as well said, Amen. Peace be unto you. George Boston Rhymes in Valdosta, Georgia, doing what I do simply because I truly, truly love you.